let's take this equation again, function of capital M. And what we are going to do is we're going to convert this into per worker. So for example, Y right now is total output. But what we want to do is calculate the per worker, output per worker. How would we calculate that? Uh, what we do is divide everything by n. n, remember, is the number of workers we have. Function k divided by m, n divided by n. So this simplifies down to yn equals to function kn. Or what I can do is simplify this further and just write y, a small y, is equal to function of k, where we know that y is output per worker, and small k is our capital per worker. So you see the only difference is that uh, at this level, this was the total output in the economy, which was a function of total capital stock and total number of workers. And over here, we've just converted that into per worker. Level. So output per worker is a function of capital per worker. I'll, I'll write that down because that's an important relationship. Output per worker is a function of capital per worker. And this is important. Right now, finally, let's come to this question. Which is more realistic, a constant return to scale or decreasing return to scale? Now, a constant return to scale would mean that we are here, function of k, and of course, k is capital per worker. Now, suppose k means laptops. can mean a lot of different things, uh, but let's just say that's all the capital that we have in the country are laptops. And suppose k right now is 0 0.2. What that means is that there is 0 0.2 laptop in the economy for each worker. Or that out of every worker, out of every five worker, only one worker has a laptop in the economy and no one else has a laptop. So, now, constant returns to scale would mean that if we increase this to 0 0.4, so we doubled how many laptops are available in the economy. Our output should increase. And then if we doubled this again, our output should double once again. So if that, in this case, if our output was 100, over here our output will become 200, over here our output will become 400, and so on. And I'm just talking about doubling, you can triple, even quadruple, whatever, increasing. But is that really realistic? So think about this uh, for a little bit. Uh, so let, let's stay with this example. So suppose 20% of people in Bangladesh have laptop. Now, if you double the number of people in Bangladesh have laptop, so now 40% people have laptops. Okay, output will obviously go up, but will it exactly double? Or let's take a more extreme example. Okay, so suppose we are at this point, okay? 40% of Bangladeshis already have laptops. Now you double this number to 80% of Bangladesh have laptops. What will happen to our output, our GDP? It will increase, obviously. But by how much? Because when you think of it, only people who work in certain type of jobs need laptops. 
So I need a laptop. You guys as students of you guys need laptops and probably the type of jobs that you go after, you guys will need laptops. But does a rickshaw puller need a laptop to do well in his job? I don't think so. Does a farmer need a laptop to do well in his job? I don't think so. So after a point, as we continue to increase our capital stock, and we have more and more and more technology, our output isn't going to increase by the same level. Suppose we have K equals to one. Everyone in Bangladesh has a laptop. And now we make a progress where K equals to two. Everyone in Bangladesh has two laptops. Does that mean our output is going to double? No, not really. Having two laptops doesn't really help me do my job any better than how am I going to double my output. So constant returns to scale works in a very limited number of times, but a more realistic scenario is decreasing returns to scale. So more laptops will obviously improve our output. I'm not saying it will not, but not at a constant rate. If the number of laptops in the economy increased by 50%, maybe our output, the country's output, will increase by 20%. Okay, but definitely not by 50%. As a result, now we're going to try and draw a diagram for this. And this is what the diagram is going to look like. So over here we have capital per worker, which is K. Over here we have output per worker, which is Y. Now, if we were going with constant returns to scale, what we would see is a straight line. If capital per worker, K, small K, increased by 10%, small Y increased by 10%. If small k increased by 200%, small y increased by 200%. But of course, we've already talked about why that is not a very realistic scenario. We were going to have decreasing returns to scale. So what that is going to look like is this. This is function of k. And the reason we have this is shown here. So notice the rates at which it is changing. When we have very little capital, so around here, when capital increased by a little output increased by a lot. But when we have a lot of capital, as we said, if we have k equals to one and then it becomes k equals to two, when we have a lot of capital and then capital increase a little bit again, why doesn't increase by a lot? So this is a decreasing relationship. This represents decreasing return to scale. As we have more and more and more of capital, we have less and less of Y. So let me just get rid of all this, or I'll just draw another one. This is K, zero here. This is Y, and the diagram looks which is FK. Okay. 